where would you go and who would you guys be looking to see? We'd stay right here. I was going to say, we have lots of options. It's kind of crazy. People think Roanoke may not have access to, uh, to a lot of big names, but we actually do. So. Right. Hey, we have people contacting us all the time about um, looking for a realtor and looking to move to Richmond, Virginia. If that sounds like you, we would love to be the real estate team that helps you. All of our contact information is below the description and we can't wait to hear from you. Hey everyone and welcome back to Living in Richmond, Virginia. I am in another spotlight. Um, thank you so much for joining us and I'm super excited to have Chris and Hal Cohn who are going to be talking to us about Roanoke, Virginia today. Chris and Hal, thank you so much for being on. Oh, well, good morning, and thank you for having us on. It's our pleasure. It's an honor. Oh, you stole my words. I was going to say it's our <laughs> pleasure. Thank you for reaching out. Uh, hopefully, we uh, we bring some value to your folks in Richmond, as, as well as throughout the world, as people are trying to figure out if they want to move to Richmond or Roanoke. So it'll be fun. Absolutely. The two R's, you know, head That's to right. head. Right. Ding, ding, ding. Right? <laughs> All right. So... <clears throat> let's kind of talk so people can get kind of an idea of what to expect from each area. You know, if you wanted to go to an amusement park and you lived in Roanoke, where would you go and about how far, how long would it take you to get there? Well, I was thinking about that this morning a little bit. We, we've got probably two options. You know, you've got Kings Dominion if you want to stay in Virginia and keep your money here in Virginia. And that's right at about three hours away. Or you can go down to the Charlotte area. And I forget the name of the place down there, but the music park down there was about a little over three hours away. And so. then there's Bush Gardens, which is also in Virginia on the coast. And so that's about that's four Williamsburg, and a half. right? Yeah. Yes. Yep. Four and a half hours. Yes. Absolutely. Uh, yeah, it has to, it has, the Virginia person has to keep me on track. You know, me being from Georgia, I'm still learning. Gotcha, gotcha. You're 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 like, okay, let's see, where do we need to go? Somewhere in Georgia, somewhere in Florida. You know, you gotta keep it, keep it local here up to our particular areas for sure. All right. And how about any kind of uh parks, like big parks for you guys? What do you have available and how long would it take you to get there? Yeah, so if you're talking about playground parks, green space, green ways, is that what you're alluding to? Yeah, something like that. Okay, great. So that's what we love about this area is the quality of life and then those natural amenities because we have parks scattered throughout our entire valley. And that's what is really attracting people is mm -hmm. this quality of life, how gorgeous it is. We're wrapped around this valley with mountains on all sides. The closest mm -hmm. park is going to be, you know, five, seven, ten minute drive. From or, wherever you are, most or, likely. Yeah, or even a walk if you're like in the Grandin area or you're close to any of the greenways, there's parks okay. along the way. So uh, super easy access on, on that front. And, and there's, they seem to be revitalizing all of them. Yes. So we've got a couple that actually have a zip line in them now and they're they're tweaking all of them to make them more modern and probably a little bit more safe too. Right. <laughs> good. <laughs> Always good to keep that in mind. So kind of on our end from Richmond, same amusement parks that um, is funny uh, you saying about the thing in Charlotte. Um, I bet that is something that's kind of tied also with like the Kings Dominion bit. I'm thinking it's the same company possibly, but definitely for us in Richmond, Kings Dominion for sure. That's about everything in from Richmond area would be about half an hour to Kings Dominion max. Mm -hmm. And then definitely Bush Gardens down in Williamsburg, which are like at a right at about an hour. So nice and convenient. Um Absolutely. Same things to you guys. We do have a really great park service throughout the Richmond area. In fact, um, I think this past weekend, I feel like we were on several different trails and parks for sure, down things on Reedy Creek, um, things right off of the Nickel Bridge and um, down over by Westover Hills, but just a lot of green space, a lot of things you can get away from the hustle and bustle if you want to sort of thing. So the botanical garden, that sort of thing. All right, so if you guys had um, like, if you wanted to catch a big concert, one of the big name people that are running through and on tour throughout the country, where would you go? And who would you guys be looking to see? 
Good to stay right here. <laughs> I was going to say, we have lots of options. It's kind of crazy. People think Roanoke may not have access to uh, to a lot of big names, but we actually do. So right. uh, yeah. we recently went to a, uh, a concert. Where was it? You remember? Which one? The Coves. I mean, we, this is our thing. We <laughs> love live music. So yeah, okay. the Coves, we saw that's at Smith Mountain Lake. Outdoor oh. amphitheater, and we saw Kenny G. <laughs> oh my and God! In Union Hall, Virginia. It was so really neat. It was pretty, pretty cool. And small, small, intimate venue. And then uh, one of our favorite places is Dr. Pepper Park, which is almost in downtown Roanoke. And uh, they have anything from country to rock to tribute bands to uh, the Wing Fest. You name it, they've got it going on. And then we have bigger venues like Renault, the Berglund Center. That's our Renault County Civic Center. It's now changed to Berglund Center. And we also have uh, Salem Civic Center and the Harvester down in Rocky Mountain. Mm -hmm. So that pulls lots of great venues. And we have another outdoor amphitheater, Elmwood Park, yes. which is drawing some national names. So we can stay really local and see live big acts. We can also travel elsewhere. Um, I mean, when I was a teenager growing up here, it was going over to Virginia Beach or going down to Charlotte, but we don't really have the need for that anymore, unless you just want to. Exactly, yeah. exactly. So that's really nice that you guys have things. So would you say for any big things that are coming through, how long would it take you to get to some of the places you were talking about? Well, well, <laughs> our, well our running joke on our YouTube channel is the fact that you can get anywhere in the Roanoke Valley in 20 to 30 minutes, no matter where you are. So I was... So with that, you know, it's like you're you're probably 10, 15, 20 minutes away, depending upon where you're going. If you're going to the Harvester, you're going to be 45 minutes to an hour. But mm -hmm. if you're at Berglund Center, Elmwood Park, you're at Salem Civic Center, you're going to be 15 to 20 minutes to get to those, uh, depending upon where you live. Okay. Max. That is terrific. That's, that's really nice. So we used to have a really big venue here in Richmond that has recently closed, but for a big concert, I love it that you guys went and saw Kenny G. I bet that was the super fun concert. He's really fun, actually. Uh, he was not what I had intended by any <laughs> means. He, pl he played great, but then like his humor and just like yes. talking through the show and stuff it was, was very uh, unique and a lot of fun, so... <laughs> Yeah, it definitely wouldn't have been one I right off the bat would be like, oh, but then uh, thinking about it, be like everything from like your child, your, your childhood and from growing up and stuff like that would be a terrific one. Right. I would say for a concert, um, if you're living in Richmond, um, the big one got closed uh, downtown. So you are going to have to travel out of the area unless you're doing it summertime. We do have almost like one of the ones you described. We have uh, Innsbruck Live, which is right in town, you know, pretty much 20 minutes or less from anyone in the particular, uh, depending on where you're at. And they have like, you can buy season tickets and it's all like the amphitheater on the lawn, probably much like you're talking about, Chris, like going to Virginia beach or something like that and, right. and doing stuff like at the, um, you know, that different thing. Um, but I'd say, and big names that come through there for sure. Um, and then otherwise it'd be like Charlotte's, Charlottesville would be like an hour and 45 minutes from an uh, yeah. hour, 30 minutes like that. And then also probably more like Norfolk, like the scope, uh, the Norva, and that's going to be about an hour and 30 minutes. Um, so sounds like you guys have some things that are really close, which is awesome. Okay. We're going to give that to you for sure. <laughs> I have a question. So, so the outdoor amphitheater that you have, is that the yeah. one that is out by Glen Island? Is that right? Yes, that's the one. Yeah, so so we've actually been up there a couple of years ago and saw uh, the group Alabama with my mom, and that was oh, an amazing good. concert. Beautiful Great venue. time, yeah. Beautiful yeah, venue, venue. yeah. Perfect. You're right. Really, really nice. And I think it's super. Isn't it cool that it's like you totally do not know it's there no. unless you're like actually going back there in the middle of like an office park. Yes, you know? right, right. Totally. Yes, agreed. I think it's fun when you're local and you like don't even know and you're like, all right, Innsbruck. It says Innsbruck, so it must be right here. I don't think they're talking about Austria. Just, just don't think that for sure. So. Okay. If the cones were heading to the beach, where would you be going and how long would it take you to get there? <laughs> that's a great, that's a great question. It depends on where you want to go. A um, lot of beach options. It sounds like you're bursting to say. No, something. you go for it. Okay. No, um, we could go to Virginia beach again. Uh, we typically head down to North or South Carolina for their beaches, a little bit warmer. Yep. And we've got pretty easy access to the Outer Banks, which is nice. Um, so that's where we vacation when we do a beach vacation. We're not 
you may be asking the wrong people because we're not really beach people. We do our, um, I know. We no, love we're the Roanoke. Why would you be beach people? That's right. That's right, so, yes. <laughs> but um, yeah, we usually do North Topsail or Outer Banks. Okay. There. And you, you've got options for like, if you want to chill, you go to North Topsail, Topsail Island, Outer Banks, which a lot of people do. Or if you want like a whole lot of activity and mm -hmm. just immerse in commercialism per se you want to go to myrtle beach and those then, are about six hours i mean that's about six hours and then you've got like high rises you name it you've got every option possible to stay down in myrtle beach and then north tops will usually have uh you know individual uh detached homes or townhomes or condos down there and uh you know basically you go down there you hang out at the beach all day go back to your condo maybe cook or uh, go out to dinner to a couple of restaurants but uh this is a good time to, to hang out with friends and family and just uh, kick back if you're wanting to enjoy some sunshine. Definitely. Now, when you guys go to Topsail, about how long does that take you to get there from Roanoke? It takes about five and a half hours. Okay. So you guys get and go into the beach. Good thing you're not beach people because you're not right on it. For right. sure. Oh, exactly. Correct. Yep. All right. So yep. Richmond, I, I think we've got a little bit of an advantage there because we are definitely very convenient to the beaches. Um, little, definitely a little bit more of a straight shot. Obviously, we've got Virginia Beach right. uh, straight down, you know, 64, I'd say hour and 45 minutes. You could be to the big beach. And then for the Outer Banks, we also are really fortunate because you don't even have to get on the interstate for a bit. You can stay on, uh, stay on 460, go the back way down and still be to the Outer Banks, you know, by to Nags Head or even to Kitty Hawk or Kildeva Hills by like, I would say right at three hours. It's wow. not bad at all. That is nice. It definitely mm -hmm. put it a little closer. Yeah. But not too close. <laughs> um, all right. Now, I know, <laughs> I know for sure who's going to be the better place to be if you are a mountain person. To get to the mountains, if you live in Roanoke, do you just need to walk out your door pretty much? <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> Depending on where you are. Yes. yes. We uh, we are very fortunate, as I mentioned, if you don't know about the Roanoke Valley, we do sit in the valley. And access to mountain ranges is, is very, very close. Um, we are really big about um, our region, both trout fishing, biking mm -hmm. mountain biking specifically right yeah Our ranking is pretty powerful east coast mountain biking capital of the united states yes oh. <laughs> well, there you go <laughs> yes and then lots and lots of hiking trails kayaking any kind of boating you can imagine we also have smith mountain lake which is a oh, you're a lucky dog and um that affords opportunities for things like jet skiing, uh, sailing, things like that. But yeah, mountain mountain access is is literally outside your back door. We're we're about 10 minutes right now from the Mill Mountain Star Trail. I was going to say if we stood up at the office that we're at and we looked out the window, we could see the top of it right here. Yeah. So urban urban mountain access and then there is more rural and you can pick anything in between, but loads of trails it's very easy and and what i like is that you can pick based on your level of interest and experience and you can tailor those trips we even have outfitters that can do guided tours that's really nice how far are you guys from sith mountain lake it's if depending upon where you live in roanoke proper if you're on the north side you're going to be about an hour if you're like downtown roanoke proper on the south side you're going to be about 45 minutes so wow. that's the interesting thing is people will actually live at the lake and then they commute into roanoke to work okay. or vice versa some people will live in roanoke but then they have like a lake house or somebody that has a lake house and they'll go down there and spend the entire weekend during the season down there so Gotcha. It's definitely a, a lake lake lifestyle mentality for those folks. And so they, they make it happen. Well, you guys are super, super lucky. Um, uh, Smith Mountain Lake has always been near and dear to my heart. That's where my husband and I uh, honeymooned. And we've Aww. gone back a couple different times. And I swear to God, the house that we bought in Richmond reminds me so much of the house that we uh, honeymooned at. Like everything about it. Wow. Um, it was eerie when we That's saw strange. it. That's strange, wow. So. It had a big impact on you then. It was it was meant to be. It was That's meant right. to be. Absolutely. Um, I'd say for Richmond, um, you, die, you guys definitely have got it, you know, and I know that every time I've visited Roanoke and I always forget how close it is to Smith Mountain Lake. I always, it's like Roanoke, for us driving from Richmond, it's like, are we ever going to get there? But then you get there and you're like, oh, it's so beautiful. <laughs> but um, 
no, definitely for us, um, for any kind of mountains, um, not a bad drive, but it's, we're going to have to head out towards Charlottesville. So it's going to be, we're going to be at least two hours before we're hitting the mountains. Um, so you guys definitely have it there, um, for sure. And I love it that you're so close to Smith mountain Lake. We do have a lake, um, at Lake Anna, what would, would be about an hour, eh, 45 mm -hmm. minutes from us, a big, um, I don't know, not the it, it, great, but not the intrigue sort of thing. And then a lot of people out here, we also head out to the the river. You know, that's, well, I guess that's not really mountain sort of thing. So never mind. You guys well, won. Yeah. Well, well, I, well, I well, well, water, water yeah. is water on that front. It's just a matter of what are you going to do on the water, right? So, exactly. you know, like if you're going to go wakeboarding and uh, paddle boarding and you're skiing and those types of things, you're going to need to be at, be at the lake. But then river wise, I mean, Kayaking, canoeing, fishing. fishing, those types of things. So, for you know, sure, those, just different people are going to be at different places. For sure, that's interesting about people um, commuting that live at the lake and commute into Roanoke, or they have their. I mean, I, I don't know why that never even dawned on me. Smart, <laughs> smart, smart. All right, what would you guys say? And I know this is going to be an answer for each of you. You both might have something different. Favorite place to visit in your MLS coverage area. I'm gonna start with you, Chris. What's your favorite spot in the Roanoke area to go to? Neighborhood-wise, right? Mm, no, just here. in general. Just in general. In general, mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. You know, I, well, I like the characteristics of every single place that we have in the area, so mm -hmm. I've gotta cover it that way. <laughs> yeah, that's fine. But personally, I get really excited when someone says, there's this little subdivision area, neighborhood area in Cape Spring called Bridalwood. And mm -hmm. whenever somebody says, oh, we found a house in Bridalwood, I'm like, ooh, 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 I'll go, I'll go. Yeah. So it, it's really nice because it's contemporary homes and we don't have a lot of those here. We have much more traditional homes and newer construction, but those contemporary gems are really beautiful. That That's what I love and I'm drawn to. Okay. Um, funny story is that, you know, we were drawn to mid-century modern and contemporary homes. We ended up in a Victorian. <laughs> <laughs> so very different. But that that's where I would say I really enjoy um, being is the Bridalwood area. It's very forested. The houses are pretty hidden okay. and they're contemporary in style. Definitely. Definitely. How about you, Hal? What, what is like a favorite place you like in your MLS coverage area? Well, I, I'm going to go not neighborhood wise. I'm going to mm -hmm. go um, where we haven't been in a while and uh, we'll hopefully we'll make it there this summer or fall. I'm going to say Dalphit State Park, which is north of us and probably just on the verge of being outside of our area because okay. it's like Covington, Clifton Forge area. Okay. So, so with that, I mean, you know, just being out in the woods and mm -hmm. not having a just in, taking in the beauty of the mountainside and just uh, being able to chill out with the family is it, huge. And we haven't done that like we need to, but that would be one of my favorite spots. It's an easy drive for us, about an hour, hour and a okay. half up 220. So not a whole lot of traffic. And uh, then you can just kind of kind of hang out and, and very poor cell service. So mm -hmm. you can't get get a hold of us very easily if we're there. I love that. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Definitely. I have to say, if we're just talking about places we like to go, yeah. you know, mine is in the woods too. Yes, exactly. So, yeah. yeah. I would say Carvin's Cove area. Mm -hmm. It's a reservoir where we get our drinking water from. Lots of mm -hmm. um, water opportunities, hiking, biking. And then um, I'm always up on the Appalachian Trail. I love being adjacent to the Appalachian Trail. We go up towards McAfee's Knob, hike around with the kids, do some bouldering, mm -hmm. and it's fun. That's really, really nice. Really, really nice. Okay. So that is that is that is tough, you know, when I when I think about oh, where I want to go. I would say that kind of combining any kind of like neighborhoods and or what's going on kind of around it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely, I'm definitely kind of with you, Chris, that I like the combining the woods and then a certain feel for mm -hmm. an area. So for our area in Richmond, there's so many great ones, but there is a spot that's over kind of by Maymont, uh, Bird Park, the Nickel Bridge okay. and Westover Hills. And it combines kind of like the city, the park, and then just beautiful woods that you can like lose yourself in the woods. And you literally, uh, besides the like din of the highway a little bit, you wouldn't know wow. that you're in the city sort of thing. Um, and I just love the neighborhood feel. It's older. It's like storybook 
um, and you have everything really close and convenient to you, but you feel like you're in this like little village. Any oh. excuse, same thing. Like even if someone's talking about like, well, I kind of like this. I'm just like, hey, are you open to me showing you some other things? Because I think you're going to really <laughs> love this area. I think I secretly right. want to live there too. Sort of thing. Oh. But, uh, I, love, I love that for sure. Um, and then I think like fun stuff that I love they have here would be we have our we have our botanical gardens. Uh, mm. the, uh, I love our botanical gardens. I mentioned Maymont. That's like the quintessential. Everyone takes their kids there. You, everybody has the pictures of themselves with their kids when they're little, you know, feeding the goats or crying because the goats are coming <laughs> after them, you know, that sort of thing, you know, <laughs> and then the beautiful gardens and all that stuff. There are, um, and I'd love to hear about y'all's downtowns. I'm hoping that you guys can tell me a little bit about that. Um, the Richmond downtown area, there's so many different little spots, but I'd say the best one is probably uh, Carytown. Just great okay. shops, great restaurants, kind of mixing the old with the new and eclectic. There's always something cool going on. They're always doing something crazy there. Like at you know Halloween, they do like the zombie walk. Everybody dresses oh. up like zombies. And then around Christmas time, they do a Krampus watch, uh, our walk, where everyone's dressed up like these Krampus things. Um, wow. Very interesting. It's, um, um, yeah. Very, awesome. very, you know, Richmond is a, an interesting mixing pot of all sorts of different people mm -hmm. and, 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 and energy sort of thing. So is there anything else that you guys can think of that you really love in your area that's like a favorite place for you to go, even if it had nothing to do with real estate? I mean, there's so many places and that's, that's the thing in our, um, in our YouTube channel, we're in a Virginia living, just going to throw that out there. <laughs> we have everything from breweries to, um, hiking trails, to wineries, to shopping there. There's really a lot to do here. And so that's what I really adore is that when I was young, I didn't think there was anything to do. And then coming back, I have an, a better appreciation for it. Um, I would say one of our favorite things to do is just um, is just kind of hide away in one of our great favorite restaurants that I'm thinking Billy's has this beautiful mm -hmm. courtyard with mm -hmm. um, ambiance, some nice lighting, have a cocktail, just unwind from the day and um, go see a show, go see some live music or meet up with a friend and, and walk around or go to a restaurant. I don't know. There's a lot to do. Even, I mean, we just went to the winery and it was like oh, the yeah. perfect evening. I was like, this is it. This is so fun. Just being out the weather was great. Um, mountain views all around. Beautiful. Good friends. The kids are at a good age. They could just hang out while yeah. we actually worked. We filmed our YouTube video there. <laughs> perfect. <laughs> yeah. So it, it worked out great. Had food, wine. Not uh, missing anything. I mean, I think there's just there's a lot. I mean, yeah. I mean, we we can pull up the list of events and find something great to do like every single weekend. Yeah. And our running joke around here till like late fall. I mean, you can find two or three festivals or activities to do every single weekend, mm -hmm. whether it's downtown, whether it's out in Botetourt County, whether it's in Franklin County, you know, Roanoke County, etc. So. I mean, you're not you're not lacking for things to do. And then, you know, if you're talking about like seasonally, like I was thinking about the Christmas trees at, Ro at um, Hotel Hotel Roanoke, Roanoke, right? Mm -hmm. So there's a festival of trees in the, and during the Christmas season where different charities will uh, actually, you know, decorate the trees as a contest and that type of thing, which is always kind of, um, you know, fun to do with the family and just mm -hmm. something. Uh, um, I can't think of the Dickens word. Dickens of Christmas too, yeah. like it, the whole downtown. But Anyways, yeah, I think I think it just depends on the day. I feel like we have a lot of favorites that we like to do depending on our mood and our our daytime. <laughs> for sure, for sure. How 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 you know? Hmm, what flavor am I feeling right now? My mood ring. What color right. is it on today? You know exactly. Thank you for understanding. <laughs> I definitely get that. I definitely get that for sure. All right, so like <clears throat> average prices or price range um, in the Roanoke area. So whenever we uh, we talk about the Roanoke, our, our MLS, right? It's like it goes down to Smith Mountain Lake where you've got $5 million houses mm -hmm. in, all the way into Roanoke City, which you've got like twenty, thirty, forty thousand dollars $40,000 houses, right? So when you put all of that together collectively, our average uh, sales price right now is around $320,000, which has gone mm -hmm. up like everybody has throughout the United States over the last couple of years. So yep. 
Yeah, we're about three hundred twenty-seven thousand dollars as far as average sales price as of uh, April. The most recent stats we've got right now. Good deal. Good deal. Yeah. Not actually too far off from us. We're right at about three fifty. So. Okay. Mm -hmm. So very, very comparable. The two R's are very comparable, I guess. All right. <laughs> so um, you mentioned about where people, a lot of people are going to be commuting for work or what have you, but for traffic and for commuting, what would you say is the average commute time for people that live in Roanoke? We have that statistic in, in one of our um, cost of living videos. Mm -hmm. Yeah, videos. It was 20 minutes. So a 20 minute commute. Great. But we're finding a lot of people that are working remotely, which is really nice since COVID, mm -hmm. of course. Um, but also our main thoroughfares are not going to be standstill. I think that's what most people are shocked mm -hmm. about. Unless you get really heavy rush hour and an accident, you're okay. talking um, the main arteries are going to be clear. They're going to be moving. It's just going to be congested. Yep. For sure. Well, and well, well, people do complain about 81. If people are going 81 to mm -hmm. like Blacksburg, so some people mm -hmm. go to Blacksburg where Virginia yeah. Tech is to work. So yeah. if, an, if you get an accident on 81 main through fair, then you're going to be sitting there a while. But otherwise, yes. I mean, surface streets and stuff, which you can navigate around that if you're just in Roanoke City, Roanoke County, Botetourt, those types of places, then you're going to be at that 20 minute mark con pretty consistently. Okay. Okay. So even if you live in the Roanoke area and you work, let's say you work at, um, at Tech, or somewhere around there, like to get there, about how long would it take? Yeah, it's probably about 30 to 45 minutes over to Blacksburg, depending upon what area of town you live in. So a lot of people will move to, if, they, if they're living in Black, if they're working in Blacksburg, then they'll try to be on the like South and West side. So they'll kind of be like in the Salem area, Glenbury okay. area, because that puts you closer to Christiansburg and Blacksburg. And that's like 20 minutes because I'm th thinking about my car dealership. Yeah, that's Christiansburg proper. And then you got another like 15, 20 minutes to Blacksburg. Because okay. I was when I went over there to get the uh, table for the office that time, I was like, oh, I'm almost there. And then I was like, oh, no, I've got another 20 minutes. <laughs> like, oh, I, I, I forgot to Christiansburg. So there you uh, go. A, so, so average, we're, we're about that 20 minute mark. But yeah, like if you're going to Blacksburg or if you're coming in from the lake, your commute's going to be longer. But I think you expect that and understand that mm -hmm. from, from the very, we, we just have a couple that bought a house at Smith Mountain Lake here and not on the lake, but it's going to be like an hour drive for him from there to Botetourt County for his job. And he's like, oh, that'll just be my decompression time going to and from work. So he loved the house, loved the fact it was in the woods, access to the lake for the weekends. So it's going to be my little retreat on the weekend whenever I'm home at that time and not working. So I was like, okay, good, well, good deal. You know, yeah. To each their own sort of thing. All right. It's a good deal. So very comparable to Richmond. We definitely have, um, we have our main interstates that are running all the way through. Um, but commute times are pretty low. And most people that live in the Richmond area, though some commute out of the area. Most are remote or they're, they're working in Richmond. So most about, I would say about 20 minute commute too. We don't bottleneck too much on things unless, you know, same thing as Chris had, had mentioned before. Um, and, and definitely lots of secondary roads. We're pretty fortunate that we don't get just, there isn't just one way in, one way out to things. There's multiple ways. So that does help a lot for sure. Mm -hmm. All right. Property taxes. Um, in your area, how would you say that they are running in certain, in your MLS area, you know, kind of what's the most expensive, what's less expensive, all of that sort of stuff. Or how is it averaging out like assessment to market value yeah so so i'm the numbers guy so I, okay. I'll, I'll take that one <laughs> what's well, interesting because because city of salem used to be the most expensive um for for taxes when it comes to real estate right however roanoke city has added this additional tax now and last time i looked at it so you've got roanoke city's the highest you've got salem city the next then you've got roanoke county then Botetourt County, then Franklin and Bedford County are lower. So, I mean, the cheapest places to live are further out. If you're in Bedford, Franklin okay. County, those right. places. Whereas when you get closer in, you got more municipalities that have more services, right. then you're going to be paying more. So, like I said, it's Roanoke City, Salem City, and then Roanoke County are going to be the three highest. But when you talk to people, probably the same thing that happens in Richmond. If you're moving from the Northeast, or you're moving from California or Oregon or some of those places, like our taxes are like nothing compared to that when it comes to comes to your home and tax assessed value, right. that type of thing. Definitely, for sure. 
Uh, very similar in Richmond, you know, you're going to have in the city, they're going to be higher. Um, as you get into the counties, they're going to be lower. Um, I would say for assessment to actual property value averaging would probably be at about the 50 percentile, you know, when you go assessment, you know, sort of thing. Mm -hmm. um, I've noticed a lot, and I don't know if they do this the same in Roanoke, whenever we're in a hotter market where, you know, we are definitely in a seller's market, we're watching values go up. Are you seeing the same thing in Roanoke right now that? Yes. Like, we are. Yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, everything's appreciating um, for sure. Uh, you definitely see where the, the cities or the counties are obviously getting a lot of <laughs> complaints or people are showing up at City Hall going like, my assessments are so high, you know, what right. the hell? That um, they're like, oh, hey, we're going to help out and they'll bring it down by a couple cents. You know, mm. like I've noticed that for all, I was like, oh, hey, you know, Henrico, Chesterfield um, has, you know, they just brought down them by, by three cents or something. Like, Woohoo. Oh, now, now we can go on that luxury vacation to Bora Bora. <laughs> right. oh, now I can do it sort of thing. Uh, but no, it, but really in comparison to a lot of places in the country, we're very, very fortunate. And ultimately, as I tell clients too, even if your taxes are higher someone somewhere and they are lower in another spot, maybe you're going to have to pay more to be in a certain location anyways. So it's like, you know, you pay it one way or another. Right. In, Rich, in the city of Richmond, in certain areas, I would definitely say that your taxes are higher and what you're getting um, is considerably um, smaller or not as um, smaller, not as grandiose or whatever this, maybe what you would get out in one of the counties sort of thing. I think that's, you know, you pay that advantage of being in the city sort of thing. Mm -hmm. So for sure. All right. We're going to do a little test. We're going to do a little, little contest sort of thing here. Oh, Let's boy. get on our phones and we are going to try to find since Chris, and I bet I know what neighborhood is going to be in is that her favorite neighborhood Chris, find your favorite property in your MLS service area that's around 500,000 okay. and talk to us about it. It's 4,367 square feet listed at 560. Mm -hmm. It's five bedrooms, three and a half baths. And it is very colonial, very formal in style, but it's one of the only ones right now listed in Hunting Hills. At like, that price point too. Correct. Right. Yeah. And what you're um, alluding to as well, Aaron, is that, well, I think you are, maybe you're trending with the nation as well as us. We just don't have a lot of inventory right now. Exactly. So, so you have to sit, that's why it takes us a while because we do have to literally sit there right. and find yeah. it. There, there are a lot of listings, but it's just, it, they're few and far between, especially in these um, neighborhoods that I was mm -hmm. referring to. But anyway, so that's just the stats. You know, it's come down on price a bit. Um, it was built in 1986, which is so, newer for us. That is something yeah. to, to say as well. Like here in okay. Roanoke, you know, we have a lot of older homes, you know, yeah, we okay. were in the early 1900s, you know, there's not a ton of new construction. It's expensive to build new construction around here because of the fact that we're, we're a mountain, we have mountains yeah. all around. So <laughs> when you start trying to prepare sites, you've got to start using like brute force to be able to clear out rocks and other things to have a spot to actually build these neighborhoods. So yeah. We've got some that were built in the 80s, 90s, early 2000s. There's still some new construction going on here, but not a ton. But like over in Hunting Hills, where this house is, you know, the, most of those are older, 80s, mm -hmm. 90s, 70s, that type of thing. So people are coming in and buying them at the right price in some instances, upgrading them, while yeah. others are like they've already been, you know, maxed out. They look super, super great. And then you're, you know, a million dollars plus based on square footage and the amenities and that type of thing. Yeah. So. With, with the one that she was talking about, though, it was it probably needs, I'd say, anywhere from sixty to one hundred thousand dollars worth of work to, to, gotcha. to make it like what's what a what a buyer in today's market is looking for. Where they want move in ready, they want HGTV quality, that type right. of thing. So uh, that's why it's been sitting on the market because of that. That's why it's still sitting there. That's interesting. That's really interesting because you saying about there's not a lot of new construction. Um, that's where it took me a little longer actually to look through what was available because I was looking for a resale because most of everything I was pulling up in that price point for Richmond was to be built. Mm. Oh, wow. So um, there's, there's a big difference. There's a big difference Absolutely. right there. So do you have a lot of availability for new construction on, like outline uh, Richmond area or 
Is there, is there more infill? I'm sure there's not, but it's all, it's more, it's more in the counties. Definitely. I would, though there are things being built in the city, um, Mm -hmm. anything that's being built in the city for the most part is like a renovation of one of the older ones, or maybe they're taking a certain amount of spots and they're adding maybe like three story kind of a very contemporary or modern, um, Uh, condos or townhouses, to sort row homes of sorts, mm-hmm. where it's, it's definitely out into the counties where you're seeing things just push further out with the new construction because inventory has been very low. Um, you know, a resale, in fact, that's where everyone's like, you know, I really want new construction, really want new construction. I'd say that people do like new construction right now, but the resale is probably going to trump it because of it being immediate. The, the new construction, most yes. of it is to be built. There's not standing inventory, okay. which is tough, which okay. is tough. Okay. So, and, are, and are y'all bidding on lots and stuff for people to actually bid on the lot and then be able to have it? Or how's yes. that working in your market? Yes, uh, definitely where um, we have been noticing that people have land out there and it might've been ones that have even been on the market you know, in the past years have been on the market and been like relisted. If you pull up the like history, you're like, my God, this has been on forever. And you're like, somebody's like, oh, this brand new listing came up. You're like, I'll be the judge of that one. No, this has been (laughs) on for the past five years. But literally kind of since we hit the pandemic um, where yes, people bidding on the land too. And you're like, my God, what is going on? You know, sort of things. So you have to be, gotta be, gotta be careful about that. Okay. Next contest going back on that phone would be finding in your MLS area, the most expensive property that is on the market right now and tell us about it. Okay. Well, we haven't really been, we haven't been in this one. That's okay. Um, The most expensive home that's on the market right now is going to lie in the Smith mountain Lake area. Okay. And so it's listed at $5.2 million. All right. On Tranquility Road. The stats are that it's 7,470 square feet, seven bedrooms, seven and a half bathrooms. So that's really nice. And then what you're getting for that as well is this the incredible views of Smith Mountain Lake. So water frontage houses on Smith Mountain Lake can go for a premium. You'll see all kinds of different shapes and sizes of homes, but Really, you get some spectacular homes, gorgeous oh, windows okay. facing the lake. Um, this one's really special. It has a pool and its own dock, and those docks can. <laughs> well, I was going to say that is the, that is the key right there: <laughs> deep nice. water and a nice dock. Right? It's like and docks are at a premium as well because you have to get it's, it's uh, you yeah. have to go through AEP to get it approved, oh, yeah, yeah. and mm-hmm. you know you can't add on to it without them knowing and if you do then you got to remove things if you're selling the property and it's all convoluted but if you've got a nice dock especially if it's expansive then that is a huge premium and a right. huge plus for people that are looking to uh, live at the lake especially if they're going to spend what's that almost six million dollars right yes. <laughs> and another thing is that this and we have a lot of interest in equestrian here as well so okay. this one has a five stall horse barn a uh, large does. indoor arena. So you're getting that as well as this so massive How many acres house. is this all? I don't know. Look, um, three manicured pastures. So um, I'll look at that. But I was going to say the next one right below that in price point, you know, isn't that it's a million less. <laughs> but um, it still has quite a few amenities. So, yeah, let me look at acreage real quick. 15 acres. Okay. So on the lake. So that's, that's really sounds real nice. I know. So what about in Richmond? So Richmond, um, last time I did a spotlight with one of my great agent friends that I've known and worked with forever in Fredericksburg, um, we were talking about things and she had like this amazing one she was talking about that was in downtown. I was like, Oh yeah, that one is, was amazing. Ours was actually right at the, um, I think it was right at 4.2 and it was in the, the West End of Henrico in a very, very exclusive neighborhood. It has actually changed since the last time we talked. Still in Henrico, but actually on the eastern side of Henrico. Uh, this one is 4.255, um, also about uh, 73, <laughs> 73.47, you know, <laughs> quite the bungalow. Yeah. Um, with a nice big old finished basement, was built in 2005. Um, this one is, oh my gosh, what was it? It was like 38.5 acres. So this is a big property. And wow. It, and it has a nine plus acre lake 
that it is on. So it is oh not Smith Mountain Lake. Mm, you get Smith Mountain Lake. <laughs> uh, not Smith Mountain Lake, but you've got this amazing pond here. Um, this house reminds me of things that you would see on Smith Mountain Lake, the big, amazing uh, windows, looking over things. Um, and yeah, really, really pretty property. Uh, definitely, certainly would have room if you wanted to stick horses there. Of course, they're talking about, oh yes, of course, an eight plus car RV boat garage, you know, because that's what we all need, right? right. Well, we probably, get, I, with all the crap we stick in our garages, that's probably the equivalent of what we truly need. So we can <laughs> put it all in there. Who parks their cars in there? We just put all our crap in there, you know? So. Yes. Yeah. Storage garage. Yes. Yeah. And I think they need to market it as, garage and nine acre lake that comes with a house right <laughs> pretty much that's right pretty much for sure no but real pretty uh very pretty house and also very interesting um definitely going up there in price and taxes my lord um that's those are some taxes that's like eight thousand dollars in taxes so you know and in other areas of the country i'm sure the same with you guys like other areas of the country would be like is that for a, a week it's like i know they're kind of high they're for a year right like, a year that's it you know so yeah pretty fortunate that way for sure absolutely awesome 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 very good well i've learned so much about roanoke talking to you guys i just so appreciate y'all being on with us for sure Thank and you. Well, thank you. It was fun. We, we a little learned. banner back and forth. We appreciate it. We very good. Very too. good. So we'll have to see how it levels out. You guys definitely have got some on, you know, you've got some leg ups on us here in the, uh, in the old river city, but I think we might have a couple things that are, you know, leg up on you too. So I agree that that's why we got pros and cons, right? That's, that's right. right. <laughs> that's right. Uh, something for everyone. Well, yes. thank you guys, everyone, for joining in to another episode of Living in Richmond, Virginia Spotlight. And remember, leave everything better. Hey, we have people contacting us all the time about um, looking for a realtor and looking to move to Richmond, Virginia. If that sounds like you, we would love to be the real estate team that helps you. All of our contact information is below the description, and we can't wait to hear from you.